community throughout the region. Uh, I know other fellow pastors. I know what they go through on a weekly basis. I know how they think. Uh, I, know, I know the hardships that they go through. And uh, I know the turmoil that they have to deal with on a weekly basis. And uh, I, I want you to know that it's no different from when you go back to this day and age, to this day and age, for back to when Paul was preaching. Paul experienced the same thing. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that. But I want you to know Paul was human. He had a human body, amen? And he loved. He had, he had a love for his, he had love for people. And when you have those things, uh, it's an easy target for evil to come in. It's an easy target for, uh, for uh, evil to try to do something negative in your life. But I want to show you a few things tonight as we look into the Word of God. And I want to, I want to encourage those maybe out in TV land or YouTube land or whatever that is. I want to encourage those that are pastors and, and preachers out there to keep preaching the Word because it, it's not going to come back void. Amen? Uh, they may feel like it is, but it's not. But Paul had left Athens, Greece, and came down uh, less than 100 miles to Corinth. That's what you're going to see tonight. And Paul was somewhat discouraged in his ministry as he presented the gospel to the Greeks and also to the Jews. And he had previously uh, read out, been read out of uh, Thessalonica. Then he came to Greece and the city of schools of philosophy, great philosophers, uh, or they thought they were great. Uh, they were great in their day and age, like Aristotle, Plato, and and uh, Socrates and many others were involved in a pagan tabernacle for pagan god worship. And, that, and, and that's kind of what took, uh, took place in this city. And uh, what a place to start a church. How would you like to start a church there? And, uh, but that's exactly what Paul's going to do. He's gonna, he, you're going to see in verse 1 tonight that Paul's going to roll right into Corinth. But let me read these tonight in verse 1. And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, that lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius, uh, Claudius Caesar had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. And when they opposed themselves and, and, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth, I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one of the one that worshipped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing believed, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to the Paul in a vision by night. He said, Be not afraid, but speak, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And he continued there continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Uh, Brother Blake Kendall, would you pray for us tonight? We can apply it to our lives, and Lord, as we go out of the community, and Lord, sit underneath this uh, preacher, Brother Keith, Lord, that we can gain wisdom. That's right. uh, Lord, we need your wisdom upon our lives. Lord, we need to change. We need revival in our yes. land, Lord. Amen. Lord, it's only through the truth of your word, Lord, that we can possibly get right with you That's right. and uh, get the world out of us, Lord. God, I ask you for your spirit of God to move across this congregation in a mighty way tonight. Lord, I ask for your spirit of God to move across our community and across our land. God, we are so much in need. I know yes. we need you so much, Lord. Uh, Lord, the ones that are seeking you are finding you. That's Lord, right. the ones that are not, Lord, we ask you to let us seek them out and share your gospel just like what uh, Paul did here to the Jews. Uh, Lord, as, as he went out to the synagogues, Lord, they rejected him. But, Lord, the, that's what the world's doing to us. But, Lord, we got to be obedient to you. Right. So God, I ask you just to help us do that. Lord, let's learn about how to do that. Uh, let us apply it. 
God, I ask you just to be with our pastor tonight, a fresh and new, to give him the words to say. God, speak through him tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, I want to just go ahead and tell you tonight, I was over next door talking to our students, and uh, uh, August the 26th, that's on a Saturday, and then, uh, then uh, the 27th is on a Sunday, and 28th is on a Monday, and 29th is on a Tuesday. I have uh, I've talked to our youth, and they're going to they're gonna challenge their friends. We're going to have Ken Freeman come in on the 26th on a Saturday night, and it's going to be youth-centered. But any adults can come, amen, you're, we're, we're, you're all invited, we're all invited, but it's going to kind of be youth-centered, they're going to bring their friends, amen, the ones they're concerned about that, that are lost and undone, I want our young people to have the opportunity to get their, to, to see their friends saved, amen, and then they can encourage them, they'll be more like-minded people, and, and uh, we're, hey, I'm, I keep throwing gas on it, I don't know about y'all. I don't care anything about it. Hey, I, we, I've, sk I've ice skated down enough aisles. I, I, I want some heat, amen? And I want, the, I want the power of the Holy Spirit to come, and I want, you to, I want you to get to make a mental note of that because some of you got lost husbands, you got lost spouses, you got lost kids, you got lost family members, you got lost friends. I'm talking to the adults right now. We all got the lost, and we can make a difference in their life. And I, I want to encourage you, don't take, don't take for granted that somebody in your house is saved when you don't really know. Amen? I've seen people get saved that everybody thought was saved, and they, listen, it turned, their, it turned their whole lives upside down. And that's a good thing. And uh, I'm talking about it in a good way. So don't call any of it. Get your family here. Get your friends here. We only have them here for a few days. And uh, he'll be, he, 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 uh, he graciously gave me those dates because I do not want to see, I do not want to see, uh, I want to see God work. Amen. And uh, I, really, I really believe. I keep hearing people pray for revival, revival. Here you go. Amen. Let's see what you do with it. So let's look at here tonight. Let's go. Let's, get, let's see what happens here tonight. I think I got four things to talk to you about tonight. And it's kind of, again, Paul rolls into Corinth. It, it, is a, it is a hot place that you would not want to build a church, but he's fixing to. And because God told him to. And he comes in a little bit discouraged, but look down with me in verse 1, and it calls Paul, he said, in these things Paul departed from Athens, and he came to Corinth. So he's in Corinth. One of the writers said this, Corinth was a major trade city. Athens, Greece was on the decline in commerce. Corinth had a high number of residents, about 200,000, and at one point even higher number than that because of the trade. This would not be the easiest city in which to start a church, and yet that's where Paul went after, after Athens, Greece. Uh, go, and, and I want to say the, the, the going was tough. I just want to go ahead and get, kind of get a good picture in your mind. The going was tough, but Paul the apostle did not give up. Corinth's reputation for wickedness was known all over the Roman Empire. If you'll just think about it, if, you'll go, if, you, if you go to, to Romans chapter 1, and you read verses 18 through 32, and we're talking, about, we're talking about a lot of sin there. Paul wrote that while he was in Corinth, so you know what he was experiencing. Amen? So you need to understand that. But anyway, one of the other writers said this, Thanks to Corinth's location, the city was a center for both trade and travel. Money and violence, along with strange philosophies, that's what happens when you get into those, and new religions, came to Corinth and found a home there. And, and Corinth was the capital of Achaia and one of the two most important cities Paul visited. The other was Ephesus, and Ephesus was that same type city also. Paul depended on the Holy Spirit and, and to present the gospel in simplicity. And he did that, and, and uh, he's talking to Corinth. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, I read that. Uh, I believe I read that this morning. But I would encourage you to read that. And when God is working, working I want you to know that Satan is also working also with his people, uh, with his, his own power. He'll use deception. He'll use discouragement. Amen. And you need to understand that today. Satan, when he comes, he comes when you're weak, he comes when you're fearful, and he comes when you're scared. You mean to tell me that Paul was being fearful? Listen, God is writing a letter to the Corinthian church through Paul Amen? And he's telling Paul not to be fearful. That tells me Paul was fearful. Amen? 
Now, I don't mean to the point, I don't mean to the point where, where he was shaking in his shoes, but I'm telling you, he was fearful. I'm going to explain a little bit more of that to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read that right quick. You don't, you don't have to turn there, but I want you to know when Satan shows up, you know it. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 3, and it said, and he said, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. That's Paul's writing, amen? That's where Paul was at during that time. If you're with me tonight, say amen. amen. So Paul goes to Corinth, Corinth, number one. Number two tonight, God sends encouragement through devoted helpers. That's what God will do. I want to tell you something. If you're discouraged, you, God will send encouragement, amen? Look down with me in verse two tonight. And it says this. It says, and, and they found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded that all the Jews depart from Rome and came unto them. So here, here's uh, Aquila, here's, here's his wife Priscilla. They have come to, uh, they have come to uh, see Paul, and, and here they are. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to they're spend some time with Paul. Yeah, I want you to know that when you're discouraged, God always brings the right people around you. And they'll be like-minded people. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when you look at verse 3, because, and because he was of the same craft. They were tent makers. And, and he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation, occupation they were tent makers. And that's what Paul was. So they were going to make tents together and they were going to commune together and they were going to encourage one another. I want to tell you something, church. When you get, when you get discouraged, you need somebody to encourage you. And God will send those people. I promise you he will send those people to do that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm going to turn over there. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to. I, I want you to see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. I want you to see what he was going through for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out above measure, uh, pressed out of measure above strength. Now, I want you to see that word pressed out. It comes, it comes, it comes from an Irish tense word. It, it comes from an Irish tense word. that It's a donkey that is so overloaded that his, his bones and his legs are splintering out because he's so overloaded. Air's tense is kind of like a picture in time. It gives you a picture in time. Can you imagine a donkey so loaded that his legs, his shins are splitting out because of the load he's carrying? That's the type of load that Paul was under. And it says in verse 9, he said, he said in verse 8, excuse me, it says, For our trouble was come to us as in Asia. We were pressed out above measure, of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even for our lives. But we had the sentence of death in our lives that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raises the dead. In verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that we will yet deliver us. Let me tell you something, church. God always delivers his people. You just go into battle. God's got the big guns, amen? And I want you to understand that tonight because that's important. Hebrews 12, 3, I, I believe Paul's one of the writers for Hebrews, and, and you don't have to agree with me, but you could be wrong. But anyway, Hebrews 12, 3 said, For consider him, Jesus, who endured the cross, such contradiction of sinners against him, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. I want you to know God will always send his people encouragement in their time of need. I'll tell you what I do when I'm discouraged. I ask God to send people. I do. And I'm telling you, church, it hadn't been. I, 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 I'm telling you, I said, Lord, I probably need a little encouragement today. Bing, here comes a text, and I'm thinking, what, what? How did they know? It's God. Amen? And I like a little bit more interaction myself, and God will bring, hey, when I, when I go out, when I go out, people, it seems like God always brings the right people around me. When I'm discouraged. I know y'all don't ever get discouraged, but I do. And I, I want you to know it's okay to get discouraged along the way because we've got a human body. And, and God, God will use us anyway. Somebody say amen to that. And I, and, you know, because what we need, what we need when we're discouraged, we need grace. Grace. You know, grace, I love Adam, I love Adrian Rogers. He says, 
His formula for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. And I love Tony Evans. It's probably my favorite. It says, the inexhaustible supply of God doing for us what we can never do for ourselves. That's called grace. I was, I was, going, on a, I was going on a mission trip to Honduras, and uh, we were in one of those countries. I can't remember where we flew into, but they had, it, uh, they had a parallel Escalade. Uh, uh, is that what you call them? Not an Escalade, but a, what do you call those things? Huh? Uh, anyway, you walk on them. <laughs> and while you're walk, what is it called? Escalade. It, yeah, Escalator. Escalator. I just didn't get the ER in there, amen? Hey, you don't have to be smart to be a preacher. You just got to be obedient. Anyway, you, you could walk, and what, what, the, what the theory was is when the plane landed on this side of the airport, when you had to get on the other side of the airport, they gave you these escalators that were parallel, amen? And you could walk on them, and you could walk normally, but really you were running. Well, me, I just thought, I don't need that, es- I don't need that escalator. And, and they, I saw two ladies get on that that, what, that was with us. There was about 10 or 12 of us, and they got on it. And I just thought, I'll just walk beside them. And I was walking, and they were walking, I was walking fast all I could get. I mean, I got a pretty good gait. And I looked up, and they were ahead of me. And they, here's what they were doing. They were talking like this. And, and they were passing me. That's the grace of God. They, put, they, they just put their regular effort into it, and God took them further. And that's what the grace of God does. It's the inexhaustible supply of God doing for us what we can never do for ourselves. It catapults us where, where God needs us to be, and, and it does that in the simplicity of the Holy Spirit, where you don't have to be fighting it all the time. Anybody home, say amen. amen. I want you to know that Paul supported himself as a tent maker. Jewish rabbis of that day did not accept money from their students, but earned their way by practicing a trade. Rabbis said, one who does not teach his son to work teaches him to steal. I like that. I think we need more, I think we need more of that in the USA. Amen? Also, Aquila and Priscilla risked their lives for Paul to serve faithfully in Rome. In Romans chapter 16 and verses 3 and 4, I want you to know that they did that. They risked their lives. God bless his pastors with faithful lay people to get his kingdom work done. I tell you, I'm, I am very thankful for the lay people that we have here that always get the job done. They're always encouraging, amen? And you can count on them along the way. Anyway, Aquila and Priscilla also, they assisted Paul in Ephesus in Acts chapter 18. I would encourage you to, and to go read the rest of this chapter in verses, in verses 18 through 28 where even they hosted a, a church in their own home. In 1 Corinthians 16, 19, it says, The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that it is in their house. You think they weren't a great encouragement to Paul? I mean, you just think about that. These had to be encouragers, that they would fight the good. They risked their lives for the cause of the gospel. They risked their lives for Paul. And, and, and they had a church in their home that was started. Encouragement by great people as Aquila and Priscilla. And then when you look at verse 5, look down with me in verse 5. Let, let me go ahead and read verse 4. It says, And they reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Now notice that. And when Silas and Timotheus was come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed or compelled in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Now, I want you to see, I, I want you to focus in on this verse. Don't just read over it. I want you to know that Paul was in, a, in probably a little discouragement state. And here's, here, 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 here he sends Aquila and Priscilla, and he encourages them. And they're tip making and they're doing their craft and they're, they're working together and iron sharpens iron and, and, and I would say they're, they're preaching to one another. Amen? You get all fired up. I tell you, it happens. I, there's, a, there's a good friend of mine named Mike Murphy that pastors out in Enon. I get around here and the next thing you know, we, we try to out preach one another to one another. But we don't, we don't intend that, but we do that. We start, pre- we start going and listen. Listen, we we were goose hunting one time. The geese were flying. We was in there preaching to one another. 
I get around Brother Ronnie Stinson Sr. and get, he gets to preach and I get to preach and I, and you just get all fired up and, and you get that encouragement. And here it comes, I want you to see this first, but when Silas and Timotheus, they were come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled. He saw them, his open shell and Aquila, they done charged him up, and now here comes here come Timothy and, and Silas there, they rolled in there, and he was so fired up, he went, he went and preached Jesus Christ to the Jews. You've got to have your people. You've got to have your encouragement. And, and God always works those things out. And you pastors out in TV land, I want to tell you something. I understand where you're at. you always got to deal with a couple of knuckleheads. Don't worry about it. Just keep preaching the word. God will send you your help. There's always a couple of them, amen, that they think it's about them and nobody else. They think it's about their feelings and how they feel about it. But I'm going to tell you something. God can build a church around anything. Amen? And God will build a church. You just stay the course. Amen? Anyway, here we are. Here we are. Right here, they have a church in their home. They get down to verse 5, and Silas and Timothy pull up. And, and buddy, they, they bring in financial aid. In 2 Corinthians 11, 9, they, they brought financial aid to him. And after that, Paul was able to go, to go full-time and to present the gospel. Now, you tell me that's not encouraging. Encouragement will always come. It will always, encouragement, will, God will always send to the obedient. Amen? I tell you what, God's good at that. It's always on time. Number three tonight. When opposition comes, opposition, opposition comes when God blesses his ministry. That's when it comes. When God lays his hand on the ministry, there's always opposition. I've told you all progress without problems are impossible. We need to understand that. Amen? But we need to mature up. And in verse 6, it tells us, And when they opposed themselves they, and blasphemed, he shook his raiment, Paul did, and said unto them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go to the Gentiles. You know, he presented that gospel, and he he, 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 in the, to the Jews, he taught, he, he preached on Jesus Christ in verse 5, and, and they, they opposed themselves. They opposed it. And he shook off his raiment. You know, church, that's a, that's a pretty strong statement. There's two interesting, there's two interesting Old Testament images are found in this verse. Number one, he shook off, he shook off one's gar to shake off one's garment was an act of judgment that said, you have had opportunity, but now it's over. In other words, like today, you may say, I'm washing my hands with this situation. You ever said that? That's kind of what that is. It means shake off one's garments. And then number two, to have blood on your hands means that you, you bear the responsibility for another, another's death because you were not faithful to warn him. But to have blood on your head means that you are to blame for your own judgment and had opportunity to be saved, but you turned it down. You understand that tonight? And you know, that's a pressure upon the pastors of the day. See, you don't understand that. You don't understand that when preachers go out to preach, they've got to preach the full counsel of God. As a matter of fact, in, in, in Acts chapter 20, 20, I think it is, in verse, in verse uh, 27, Paul writes, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That means he preached all of it. That means he didn't hold back. I got, what, I got in trouble years ago when I was a younger preacher, and I, and I, was, I was out preaching. I, I get called to different places to preach, and I was preaching down in Carlisle County, and, and somebody that kind of liked me a little bit brought their family and they wanted their family to hear me preach, and they would come from a, a way different denomination. And I remember that day I was preaching and I got down to the part of baptism and I knew, I knew that th that family sitting there was not going to receive that. It was going to cause animosity between that family and all of them together. It was going to cause a division in that family. Or I thought it would. So I skipped over that and didn't preach it that day. I should, I, I messed up. See, 
When God gives you a message, you preach that message. I've had people call me or sit with me uh, uh, during the week and, and say, Brother Keith, this, i got, I got to have prayers for this and this, that, and other. I said, ho, 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 I'm preaching on that this Sunday. I've already got it because it was already given to me on Monday. Amen? So I want you to know I'm going to go ahead and preach on this anyway. I'm not going to preach on it because you're talking to me about it. It always comes up that way. Every time it seems like I run into somebody and counsel somebody, it always comes up that way. And I tell them, listen, I'm already preaching on that, and I'm not going to change my message. I've done, done it one time. I didn't tell them. But I've done, done it once, and I'm not going to do it again. You learn lessons, church. You preach the whole counsel of God, even if it's going to be uncomfortable for people. But you always do it in love and restoration, not with a haughty spirit. Amen? Amen. I want you to turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 3. I want you to see some things. That's in the Old Testament. Amen? I'll give you a few minutes. You can look down there in front of your concordance and see where it's at. It's okay. I used to do that. Thank God for thumb tabs. Amen? I mean, I get, hey, here, here's what, when I got saved, I was 39. I, I mean, 40 years on, you're t- I don't know the books of the Bible. I'm acting like I'm turning to it. I'm looking for, I have to look in the front of it and see where it's at. Amen? God gave me a Bible with thumb tabs. I, that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I could turn over there like I knew where I was going. I mean, I, I don't know why I was ashamed that I didn't know the books of the Bible, but I just didn't. I mean, I just didn't, I wasn't interested in it. But when God saved me, I got interested. Amen? You know, when, whenever God saves you and he comes in you and you know the author, you don't mind trying to, you, you don't mind memorizing the books of the Bible. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Y'all with me? Ezekiel? Y'all got it? Ezekiel chapter 3. Let me show you something here. Let me show you the pressure. Let me show you the pressure that's on pastors today. We're watchmen. We're overseers. Do you understand that? you understand that, church? Amen. you understand that we can't sway to the right? We can't sway to the left? We've got to stay straight? I've tried to teach these young preachers that. You've got to stay straight. Amen? In and, and chapter 3 and verse 17, I'm just going to pick up there and kind of, get, kind of give you a, a heads up. It says, Son of man, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Okay? Y'all with me? He's made me a watchman. He's made me an overseer to Chief Cornerstone Baptist Church. Amen? I'm a pastor. Ezekiel's a prophet. He says, he said, Son of man, I've made thee a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me. So see, what I preach, I can't back off of. I've got to preach it the way God gives it to me. Even though it may be uncomfortable for people. And it says, when, when I say unto, unto the wicked, that's what's happening. When I'm preaching, I'm just a messenger boy, and I'm preaching, and when the Holy Spirit does the work, he, he talks to every individual. Amen? And he says, he says this. He says, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, you don't preach it, nor speak to warn the wicked from their wicked way to save his life. That's what it's for. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity and his sins, but his blood will I require at your hand. Preacher boy. You see that? So that's why I preach the way I do. You understand that? Because I have a love for God's people. You know, I don't know about a lot of other pastors, but, but... I believe, I believe when God calls a shepherd, I believe he gives him, I believe he gives that shepherd a love for his people and a love for people. I believe that. And, there, and there's pastors I've been around that had a great love for their people. And I've been, I've been around some pastors I didn't know if they loved at all. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But, but I believe when God, when God calls a pastor and he, he calls him to the right church and, and he, puts him, he puts him in action and puts him, puts him where he needs to be and his purpose and, and all that works out, I believe that the man of God should preach the Word of God the way God wants him to preach it and not try to skip around because you've got a huge big family here that some of them's living in sin you want to offend them. You, know what? you, gotta, you still got to preach the Word. 
Because the word offends people because they live in sin sometimes. Amen? And he says, the blood's going to be in your hands. And look down with me in verse 19. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn from his wickedness, nor, or, or if he turns not from his wickedness, nor, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And again, when a righteous man doth, doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thy hand. You see that tonight? So there's pressure, there's pressure on pastor teachers today. There's pressure. On, on, on that gift. Do y'all understand that today? And a lot of that pressure comes, it comes because, because the enemy is always at work around those that preach God's word the way God wants him to. Do y'all understand that tonight? And, and that's, something that, that, that's something that God takes care of. Are y'all with me? But you see the gist of all this. Turn with me to chapter 33 of Ezekiel. Look at verse 1. <coughs> Y'all getting this? Amen. <clears throat> and look, look, look in verse 1, chapter 33. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. Now, Jerusalem, Jerusalem was under siege here, okay? And, and God's given them a last call to Israel to repent. In their mind, in their minds, they thought they were going all right, but God, God showed them different. Amen? Now watch. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a band of their coast and set him for the, their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. You see that tonight. If I sound out the word of God and I present it out and it goes out and lands on people and they, they decline it, then the blood's on their hand. It's on their head. It's on their head. If I don't do it, if I don't preach it, then the blood's on my hands because God got them there and God's going to give them the opportunity to, to, to accept the word of God. You understand that tonight? And it says in verse, in verse uh, eight, 5, And he that sounded the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his own soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. How important it is to me to preach the word of God? Do you understand why I preach the way I do? Because I love our people. I love our people and I want them to know the truth and because the truth will set you free and, and God requires it of a pastor teacher. If you're going to go out and preach, I, I praise God for you. You get to go out and preach. We've got Brother Matt Dowdy. He's out preaching somewhere in Tennessee tonight and Brother Barry Pritchard's been over at Liberty and those type of things. There's been people going out preaching each week and I praise God for you, but you better preach what God tells you to preach and don't skip over something because it's going to be uncomfortable where they won't call you back. You preach that word, but you don't do it in a hateful spirit or a mean spirit. You preach it in love and restoration. Let God do the work because the power of the Holy Spirit does the work. Y'all with me? And sometimes I say some things that's very uncomfortable, but I've got to say those things because if I don't, then the watchman's accountable. Y'all with me tonight? Now, I want you to understand why pastors get discouraged. I praise God for our congregation, and not every pastor has a congregation like this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pastors that are discouraged tonight because, because they, live, they live in a totally different place than I do. They're discouraged because people, they, they, be a whole family that wants to run to church, they don't want to do this, don't want to do that. Hey, listen. I, th I talked to our youth, and listen, some of them are going down Thursday, next Thursday, to a concert. I don't know who they are, but listen, they got that all worked out. I think, praise God! 
And we're even going to buy them Chick-fil-A next Saturday night. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to go over and eat. Praise God, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of churches. Uh-uh. We, we got to vote on that. We'll have 150, 200 kids here for vacation Bible school. And it's exciting around here. And it, listen, it's all, listen, some churches won't even let them have, have vacation Bible school, or especially for an outreach, because it costs too much money. Anybody home? And they're always having to work around things. But let me tell you something, church. I want to talk to you pastors out there in TV land. I want to talk to you preachers here. You go into church and God tells you to go to that church. You stay in that church and you preach. You preach like a dying man to a lost and dying world. And let me tell you what you need to do. You need to out-pray them. You need to out-love them. And you need to out-live them. God will take care of you and God will build that church one day. I, I know a church right now that's thriving and growing, growing and I knew I knew one day, as soon as those two men got out of the way, that God would bless that church. They are gone. They're in eternity somewhere, and that church is thriving. They had a chokehold on it. But what did the preacher do? He out-preached them. He out-prayed them. He out-loved them, and he outlived them. God's got it, church. And God knows how to build his church. And I want you to know that, that when, you, when, when I bring men in here to preach and, I, and I, I'm going to bring some of them older guys in to preach, I've already talked to them and I said, I want you to come. I want you to preach in this pulpit. Then I want you to preach over in the new church. I, I want our church to see that an 80-year-old pastor has still got it. And the anointing's still there. And they're going to be coming here in the, in the weeks to come. And I want, you, I want to show you that. I think, of, I think of Brother David Gargas, the, the witness grand, or Missy Witness dad. I mean, listen, when he preaches, the power's still there, church. 50 year, a 50 year pastor. You just got to stay in your work. You got to stay in your work that God's called you to do because God's got your back. Anybody home tonight, say amen. amen. And you see in verse 7 and 9, it said, it said in verse 7 and and he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. That house that joined hard, it was right there next to the synagogue. Amen? God's got such humor, don't he? Amen? And Crispus, look at here in verse 8. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. What about that? He got saved and his whole household got saved. What happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Aquila and Priscilla came down and encouraged Paul. Then Timothy and Silas came down and encouraged Paul and he charged hell with a water pistol what he did. And he preached and some of them didn't believe and they rebuked him but some of them did believe and it was the chief ruler and his whole household. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed also and were baptized. You know, that's the thing about the Jewish faith. They, a lot of them just centered in on their law. But listen, the law has nothing to do with the resurrection. If you've been saved by God's grace and, and you've experienced God's grace of salvation, you need to be baptized. Amen? Y'all with me tonight? Say amen. You know, when you look at that person that you look at that ruler that got saved just think of how much more opportunity it brought for more of those Jews to get saved after he got saved one of the rulers his whole household I want, I want you to look at the last thing tonight the greatest encouragement of all comes directly from the Lord but you got to get with the Lord amen what happens when we get discouraged? We start asking everybody else their advice, but you need to get with the Lord. You need to get on your knees. You need to get along with Him and talk to Him and tell Him all your troubles. Ask Him what you want it, what He wants you to do. Ask Him how He's going to handle it. Tell Him you're going to trust Him. Amen.
Look down with me in verse 9. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. What do you think Paul was doing? He's praying, wasn't he? Church first power in prayer. Every time we prayed for Don Chanel, God has raised him up. They may put a pacemaker in tomorrow. His, his uh, pulse rate's way down in the 30s, and every time he gets up, and they, they're, they're getting him up and walking him, and they're get, trying to get him stronger. And, but listen, they may do that tomorrow, and that'd be good. I, I believe when, when Don Chanel leaves that hospital, I believe, God has, I, I, I believe God has done a work in his body that we can't explain. Amen? He spake to the Lord Paul in the night vision. He said, look what, look what Jesus told him. Remember red letters. Y'all see them red letters? They'll change your heart if you don't watch it. He says, be not afraid. Why did he tell him that? Because he's probably afraid. He says, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. You, just, you preach. Don't hold back. Amen? He says, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in the city. God's always got his people. And I want to tell you something. This church, I want, I want to tell you something about this church. This church will get in the foxhole with you. They'll get in the foxhole with one another. But you know, Satan's always trying to break those relationships up. Have you ever noticed that? He does a pretty good job at it, don't he? We start listening to him. Next thing you know, we're isolated. Next thing you know, we're depressed. Next thing you know, we're mad, irritated, bitter. We need to gravitate to God, not move away from him. We need to gravitate to one another. Amen? I hate to break this news to you. Do you know you're not perfect? Do you know that? You're not I'm not perfect. But I tell you what we can do. We could we can line up with who we can line up with the Lord. Amen. Because he's got the perfect salvation. He's the overseer. Look down with me in verse 9. He says, He says, Be not afraid, but speak. He said, To hold thy peace, for I am with thee. No man shall sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in the city. I I, I want you to see that tonight. That that really ought to encourage pastors to be able to preach the Word of God. Amen? Encouragement. He's always on time. Timothy showed up. Silas. Aquila, Priscilla. Chief ruler of the Jews got saved. All his household. Who's in, control, who's in control? God is. Amen? Amen. Now look, look here. Look, 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 look. He's still throwing up his hands. Look what happened. Verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months, year and a half, teaching the word of God among them. What a place to birth a new church off in the middle of a cesspool. That's what God does. He's looking for the lost. Luke 19, 10, Jesus said, The Son of Man come to seek and save that which was lost. Amen? I want to encourage you tonight, church. I want you to know tonight. I want you to understand tonight that we're all in this together. And when I preach, I'm preaching what God tells me to, and I can't, I can't hold that back. I can't push it over here because it's going to be uncomfortable. I got to line up with him and preach it and let it fall, let God do his work through the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever it may be. I preach things out of something what even evangelistic, and somebody come up, Brother Keith, I just need to get saved. Where'd that come from? The Holy Spirit. It wasn't even an evangelistical sermon, but they, God does that. And he encourages people. But as you as you young preachers, I want to tell you, you need to preach the word. Do not be ugly with it. Do not, be, do not beat people up with it. Preach in love and restoration like a dying man to a lost and dying world. 
and preach it the way God wants you to preach it in the context that it's rolled in and let God do his work. And he'll do a work and he'll build a church out of it. By the way, when you preach like that, it counsels people, it encourages people, it does all the work. Some of you need to get in the Word. Some of you need to get in. Amen? Just get in. You dabbled for a long time. You didn't get in. And let God do a work in you. And let, let God use you. Amen? Let God use you. Don't be afraid. Paul was fearful. He was fearful. But oh God, hey, God knew who to send down there. Amen? 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 Oh, he's going to preach a little longer. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I do want you, to, I want, I want, I'm going to leave you with this tonight. Paul's writing to Timothy, young pastor. Timothy encouraged Paul. Now Paul's encouraged Timothy. Now Paul knew a little bit of something about enduring. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 said, Thou therefore, my son, talking to Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Some of you guys, some of you guys, listen, you've been out a lot. Listen, you, you ought to be letting God use you right now instead of waiting another 10 years. Amen. He says, therefore, thou therefore endure hardness. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, he, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. God has chosen us to be a soldier. So don't go AWOL. Don't get behind the fence and hide. So rise up and let God use you. Amen. 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 And he says in verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Can you imagine Paul writing to Timothy after he just was encouraged for his fear? Hey, you learn, don't you? It's called the sanctification process. He said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind or self-control. That word power comes from a Greek word didymus, which means dynamite. God gave us dynamite power. Be not thou ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor be his prisoner, but be thou of a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Some of you just need to get in and quit worrying about what's going to take place. Just get in. He said he saved us. He called us to, to his purpose and his grace for his glory. Just need to get in. Amen? Quit hiding behind the wall. You're in the army. You're a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy being a soldier with you. Amen? Maybe God's done with you tonight. I, maybe this message is just for me tonight. Maybe it's just for my pastor friends. I don't know. But we're going to give an invitation tonight. Maybe God, maybe you got some things on your heart you want to pray about. Whatever the need is tonight, God will meet you where you're at. Amen? Maybe you need encouragement. Ask God to send you some. He'll do it. Lord, we come to you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your encouragement. We thank you, Lord, that you got your people in every city. Lord, that will rise up and be an encouragement to one another. Lord, not everybody has a church like this that has encouragement all around them. Many of them struggle. They struggle out there in all these churches, some 40 churches in this county, just Baptist churches. Lord, I think about all the other denominations, what the same pastors go through. Every pastor goes through the same thing. Every pastor has been called to preach your word, the whole council. So, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to do your work in this county. Lord, I pray for a revival right here in this land. Lord, that it'll reach 